Hello again, this is Paul Mailing for Acoustic Guitar. We're here today to talk about how to become a rock solid rhythm guitar player. And when we say rock solid, we don't just mean rock and roll. We also mean gypsy jazz, country, western, swing, whatever kind of music you play, you can always become a better rhythm guitar player and you'll be more sought after as a sideman, which means... Think of the Beatles without John Lennon. His rhythm guitar playing drove some of those records like All My Love and he's back there going if you don't believe me check out John Lennon's rhythm playing but you don't have to play like John Lennon and you don't have to play like Joseph Reinhardt when you play gypsy jazz that's my milieu and in gypsy jazz you've got to be able to play a good solid rhythm but in any kind of music rhythm guitar makes everybody else sound better so you get to be a hero if you work on your rhythm guitar playing so the first step Step number one to get us there to becoming a better rhythm guitar player is to listen to other rhythm guitar players. This is true for any kind of, if you want to play lead, you should listen to lead players. If you want to sing, you should listen to singers. So you may have overlooked this, but when you're listening to a record, sometimes it's cool to listen to what's going on in the background, the things that people are doing to make the people in the foreground, namely the soloists, the people in the background are doing things to make the foreground people sound better. And one of the things that you can do is just play solid rhythm. I suggest you get a metronome and a recording device. I use cassettes. You can use your iPhone, whatever you want to use. But um, I would suggest starting at a moderate tempo, say maybe 80 beats per minute, and just try to play four even beats with the metronome. I'm going to use an A minor six. Typical gypsy jazz chord, but for you regular jazz people, this could also be D9. Anyways, so four even beats with the metronome. Seems super easy, right? Try doing that for, uh, I don't know, maybe five, ten measures. You'll find that the longer you try to play with the metronome, it may become easier for you, it may become difficult. The trick is to play exactly with the metronome so that you can't even hear the metronome and you think maybe the metronome turned itself off or the battery died. But you want to get to be one with the metronome because if you can play tight with a metronome, it'll be way easier to play with human beings. A lot of people think that they'll become a human metronome if they practice with a metronome. It's not true. It just helps keep you honest. It helps keep you focused on the rhythm. So that's called 4-4 when you just play short, short. Another style of rhythm is 2-4 where the first beat is longer and the second beat is still short. So long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. I would recommend at this point that you record yourself playing with the metronome and see when you listen, listen back, see if you're playing exactly with the metronome. That's step one. So now step number two is to record yourself playing a piece of music. It can be something super simple. In fact, the simpler the better. And again, 80 beats per minute seems to be like, you know, a nice average tempo. Uh, I'm just gonna play a blues in the key of C. We're gonna use C, we're gonna use F7, and we're gonna use G7. And what I want you to do is Just play a nice 2-4 rhythm at this tempo. So... Now, you probably couldn't hear the metronome while we were doing that, and that's because I was playing so perfectly tight with it that you couldn't hear it. That's what you want to do as as a student. Now, the way that you can save a lot of money uh, and not pay a teacher to tell you the bad news is to take that recording that you just made of yourself and sit back and listen to it objectively and see, first of all, if you're playing tight with the metronome or if you can hear the metronome, 
that probably means that you're not with the metronome. So you want to play so tightly you can't hear it. The second thing you want to look for is like little sloppiness, like maybe holding the chord too long or mushing something in the left hand uh, when you're changing chords. A lot of people have trouble changing chords, especially if the chord is an unfamiliar shape. And sometimes what people do with the right hand, they'll do something fussy over here to cover up a mistake in the left hand. Like they may do something like this and then something silly or fussy that totally obliterates the groove that you've set up with this long short. The idea of rhythm is that it's supposed to groove, no matter what style of music, whether it's jazz, blues, pop, country, folk, whatever. You want to groove, and a good rhythm player can groove at any tempo. All right, so now that you've recorded yourself playing a blues and you've listened back objectively, this is where the fun actually happens because as you start making more and more of these rhythm tracks for yourself, you can practice your lead playing, your improvisations, or even just technical exercises with a backing track that's you on the backing track. And again, as I say, when you're listening to the backing track, you'll hear things that you may not be proud of. And you might like make a list of those things and then go back and re-record your rhythm track. I would suggest when you're feeling confident that you pick a song, and I'm gonna stick with the blues for now, just because everybody knows the blues and it's good for all styles, but in order to develop stamina, which is something you need if you're going to play in a band, you've got to be able to play a song for three minutes, maybe five minutes, or if you're in a Grateful Dead cover band, you have to be able to play for eight hours solid without stopping. So you do this by practicing, and I would suggest practicing one song for about three minutes, maybe four, five if you can stand it, and again with your trusty metronome so you're not out there all by yourself. So we're going to play uh, a blues now. Like I said, uh, but this is at 126 beats per minute, and I would encourage you to record your rhythm tracks at all different tempos. But here's a medium fast blues. A one, two, three, four. So this is 4-4, four, four. short, 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 short. Every beat is equal. So that's a very short example of what I want you to be doing. I want you to try to play as perfectly as you can with a metronome cleanly, either 2-4 or 4-4. Or if you're into gypsy jazz, uh, we have an example here for an A minor 6 chord. Uh, gypsy jazz has what's called la pompe. And we've talked about la pompe in other lessons, but just to review, it's a variation of the long, short, long, short. And it starts with a quick little upstroke So that'll get you started with La Pomp, which we've discussed in uh, other lessons. Okay, so we're, we're almost at expert level now for playing rhythm, and good for you for sticking it out this far. The, again, just to uh, restate, the most important thing about rhythm is that it's got to groove, it's got to be consistent and relaxed, um, and if you can, record with a metronome, or if you like playing along with play-along tracks that you find on the internet, you can record yourself playing along with play-along tracks. Uh, but the idea is that you actually are practicing playing rhythm. Uh, this may be difficult for you at first, so like anything, I would recommend starting out slowly, painfully slowly if need be, and then gradually speeding up whatever you're working on, whether it's rhythm, if it's 2-4 or 4-4 or la pomp. And that's true for your lead stuff too. If you're working on scales or arpeggios, start out slowly, 
and then gradually try to build up speed. Uh, there's no sense practicing mistakes. There's just no sense in it. You'll have to, what, it, what you don't work on today, you'll have to work on tomorrow, so you might as well work on it today. So good for you for working on rhythm. Uh, I'm gonna play for you a, a little bit of Minor Swing Now by Django Reinhardt. Seems to be one of the most popular songs for gypsy guitarists. It has La Pompe. It has A minor, D minor six, and E seven. And this is a, a good tune at all tempos, but just to encourage you and inspire you, I'm gonna play it kind of fast. And uh, I would encourage you to practice as much as you can, learn as much as you can about playing rhythm, but take your time and enjoy the journey. Here's minor swing, and I think this is gonna be maybe 180 beats per minute. A one, two, three, four. So uh, thanks for hanging in there for the whole lesson. This has been Paul Mailing for Acoustic Guitar. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have questions. And uh, happy playing. Enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.